Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Closing the Holes in Your Security, Developing Successful Vulnerability Management Programs. My name is Chris Brown from Contact Limited, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, together with my colleague, Colin Foster, and our speaker, Contact Esteem CTO, Joe Burtnick. Hi, Joe, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. How, how does my audio sound, Chris? Uh, sounds excellent. Thank you very much. Brilliant. So, just as a brief intro, so Joe is a wealth experience in information security spanning 20 years. And uh, before he crossed the pond, he was previ previously product management director of Symantec, at Symantec. So uh, Joe really understands the challenges of transforming and securing complex IT infrastructures. And uh, 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 a small fact that he cooks up a mean barbecue steak being uh, from Texas. So, um, uh, in today's webinar, we'll be discussing the key components of a successful vulnerability management program and ultimately how vulnerability management can drive success across your security program. So, you know, we're all aware of the challenges of securing endpoints and perimeter defenses, managing patching, assessing and identifying security vulnerabilities. So, we'll talk tactics, strategies. Um, to manage these vulnerabilities as well as covering off some of the possible mistakes to avoid. So um, you can simplify your management, um, uh, manage risk and stay compliant, you know, really just by closing the holes in your security. So uh, just before we start, a, a few housekeeping things. I just wanted to draw your attention to the chat box on the webinar panel. Um, if you do have any questions, please submit, submit them via chat and then we'll cover these off during the Q&A at the end. Um, and if you've got any questions you'd like to wish, uh, so you wish to ask on a one-to-one -one basis, we can, of course, arrange this after the event. Um, and we will, of course, distribute the presentation slides uh, as well as recording. So uh, we're going to keep this nice and brief, uh, hopefully to about uh, 30 or 40 minutes. So, um, you know, really, without further ado, I uh, wanted to just give you a brief intro to, co uh, to contact and then we'll, we'll crack on. So contact, we're a specialist cybersecurity and IT services company. Um, we work 24 seven from our high security NOC and SOC. Um, our vulnerability management teams spend the days assessing and testing vulnerabilities across very diverse infrastructures, helping close the open doors that we invariably find. So, um, you know, a lot of tasks are, are patching, managing, managing security roadmaps, uh, assessing and identifying vulnerabilities you know, and of course, we run end-to-end -end security monitoring operations from our SOC. So really, without further ado, I'd like to stop talking and hand you over to uh, to Joe, who will be guiding you through um, the uh, successful vulnerability management programs webinar. Joe, I'm just going to give you mouse control. Give me two minutes. Not a worry. Thank you very much for the introduction, Chris, and welcome everyone to the webinar today. You know, vulnerability management as a general topic is one that many people in security have their hands around, at least from a concept perspective. What we really wanted to focus on today are some of the tips and tricks, some of the pitfalls, if you will, that organizations experience and really take you through some of the best practices we've seen out in the field for how organizations address some of the challenges in vulnerability management. And as part of that, one of the things I first wanted to cover off on will be some of the pitfalls that we commonly see. Because while vulnerability management is one of those topics that many organizations understand, the real challenge with vulnerability management isn't the basics, it's how to put that into real practice and make that an, a successful cornerstone of your information security program. So one, what are some of the pitfalls we commonly see? First and foremost, vulnerabilities are widespread. Lots of applications have vulnerabilities and those vulnerabilities rank across those that are super critical to ones that are you know, fairly informational, if you will, for many organizations. And of course, whether or not a system is vulnerable really doesn't imply directly whether or not it's gonna be attacked or is uh, open to an attack. Uh, it just simply says that that particular application at that, you know, is, it does have a vulnerability in it. There may be, other security controls in place that actually prevent that vulnerability from being exploited. But the problem many organizations have, the first one, 
is that they run a vulnerability assessment product, whether one they get off of the web or one that they actually pay for commercially. And that vulnerability product goes through and provides you thousands, in some cases, tens or hundreds of thousands of potential vulnerabilities. And you sit there and look at that report and wonder, where do you start? Uh, and so one of the th first pitfalls we see is that many organizations then kind of dive straight into it and just start closing and, and patching every single vulnerability they can without really prioritizing those. And they put a lot of effort into a vulnerability program or a vulnerability F uh, event, if you will, that takes them months and a huge amount of effort. And they don't really find themselves that much more secure than they were at the beginning. Second of all, we find that a lot of organizations when they're communicating vulnerability, either to the technical teams that are ultimately gonna patch those systems or to the executive teams, they don't really put that in the correct light. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of uh, the, the most tragic stories I've heard is a CISO at an organization was getting ready to go up to the board and kind of present on the current state of cybersecurity within their organization. And to provide some technical detail, they decided to export the results that they had from their Nessus and Qualys scans and produce this three page or three inch thick report uh, that listed all the vulnerabilities in the organization. They took that to their board and a group of business centric people began to look at this report and all they came away from was the idea that their organization was rife with vulnerabilities that the organization was inherently insecure. They saw the news of all of these different organizations, big and small, spending loads of money on their, their security programs, getting compromised, and they felt that they were at risk of being compromised very imminently. And, and as a result, that CISO ended up losing their job because what they communicated to the organization was that the organization was full of vulnerabilities. And while that technically may be true, it really didn't provide an insight to the rest of the organization about what the reality of their um, state of compromise might actually be. And so without really describing the process accurately and working with the technical teams to figure out a good um, program of not only finding those vulnerabilities, but going through the process and securing or patching those vulnerabilities, as well as a way of communicating to the executive team exactly what the current state of security was within their organization. All they saw was that the organization was full of vulnerabilities, the security team clearly wasn't doing its job, and the easiest way to start um, you know, revamping their security team was to get a new CISO in their organization very tragic scenario for that particular person and for the organization because they really didn't have a, be a good sense of what was really going on with security. That whole presentation actually did more harm than good to the organization. Now the other side that we see very often with vulnerability management is that many organizations try to do a great job of managing their IT assets, looking at you know the ones that are really critical, keeping those patched, but unfortunately when we look at how organizations are actually breached and what kind of exposures and how those vulnerabilities are ultimately compromised, it's not the well-managed assets that are really at the core of your infrastructure that end up causing a breach. It is all of the other assets that are one-off items that happen to be on the network, maybe they're legacy systems, maybe they're systems that were set up temporarily for test and dev purposes, or for transitional IT projects that never were decommissioned. And so what happens very often is organizations, even if they have a, an aggressive vulnerability and patching process, they're not looking at the complete organization. They've got really incomplete discovery processes. And so it's those systems that weren't important, if you will, that end up creating the vulnerability or creating the exposures that allow their organization to be compromised. And so the third you know, pitfall we often see is that organizations only focus on the things that they feel are really important without really looking at the organization from an attacker's perspective and realizing that that temporary system you put in place just to do an IT transition project is actually still running. It's full of vulnerabilities, and that's the, that's the kicking off point, if you will, to a breach in your organization. Last but definitely not least is that 
many organizations know they should be doing some some degree of vulnerability assessment and patching. And so when it gets bad enough, they create an event, they do a vulnerability scan, and they find all the, the, the issues in their organization, they patch as many of them as they reasonably can, and then they go off and do something else. And unfortunately, the vulnerability landscape isn't one that's static. It's constantly changing. New vulnerabilities are being discovered, ones that may be really critical to your organization or you know, can cause a, a very profound breach in the organization. And so that process is more of an event than an ongoing vulnerability patch management process. And as a result, you find that even though you may have put a lot of effort into a vulnerability event within your organization, you're now still susceptible to a number of challenges. And so one of the things we'll talk about today are how you can avoid a number of these pitfalls in vulnerability management, how you can ensure your organization ultimately is far more secure and able to withstand the kind of attacks and potential breaches that might exist within your IT infrastructure. So why do organizations, why should they be looking at vulnerability management. Now, for many organizations, the reasons why are, are pretty straightforward, but as security requirements evolve, clearly GDPR is a big issue for lots of organizations over the last couple of weeks as the deadlines now come and gone. But the biggest one that drives many organizations to put in a vulnerability management program is compliance. They have to, they're legally obligated. Now, whether they're taking payment cards and now are compliant and need to be compliant with PCI, DSS, or they want to achieve or move their organization towards some degree of certification around ISO 27001, or specifically in the UK, they would like to be um, certified for cyber essentials. All of these require a healthy vulnerability management program within their organization. But most of all, organizations that are inherently secure have a foundational vulnerability management and patching program that feeds the rest of their security. And so the it really becomes one, if not the most important cornerstone of their security program. For many organizations that, that look strongly at vulnerability management, they have some key benefits. First, they're able to really know their assets because they're scanning every device on the wire. And so they see all the assets in their organization. For a lot of organizations, you'll find that the vulnerability management program or your vulnerability management tools are actually the only way of getting a complete list of the assets that exist within your IT infrastructure. Of course, when you're doing vulnerability scans, you're able to look at the attacks that are most current, what are attackers using, and they all start with vulnerabilities that exist within that IT infrastructure. And so they're able to protect the organization against the latest attacks. Most importantly, with a solid program, they're able to prioritize the effort that they have because vulnerability management and patching can be a process that's never ending and not really moving the needle forward on your security program. And so being able to effectively prioritize the patching and the other security product, projects you may have based on where the security exposures lie as you determine through your vulnerability management program become really key. And it really lets um, you be able to identify what are the biggest priorities for your organization, not just in patching, but also across other security projects and programs. And of course, as vulnerability management programs are implemented and successfully executed, the overall management of your IT infrastructure dramatically increases. You know your assets, you're patching them on a regular basis basis and as a result those well-managed systems are inherently more secure. Now it's important to note that when we look at the kind of ex breaches and exposures that organizations have in many cases those breaches and exposures are leveraging vulnerabilities that have been in the wild with patches available for 18 to 36 months. So this is not a problem where you're trying to deal with the patch that was released or the vulnerability that was discovered last week. In many cases, these things have been in the wild for quite some time. They've been incorporated into hacker tools that are available through the dark web that, or, that um, adversaries can purchase and be able to leverage en masse against a targeted organization. And as one very bad example we all know from last year with WannaCry, that 
particular vulnerability had been in the wild for years. And unfortunately, across the whole of the NHS, the number of systems that had gone unpatched and unsecured for quite some time created such an, uh, the outcry uh, or the issues around WannaCry and the outcry across the, um, the health sector in the UK to really address some of the security challenges organizations were facing. And so what are some of the key components of a successful program? Some of these are pretty straightforward. First and foremost, you have to have an active ongoing scanning process. This is where organizations are going in and looking at um, looking across various systems for vulnerabilities and being able to identify where they have software deployed that has known vulnerabilities. Now, one of the things that's kind of a misnomer about vulnerability scanning is that most applications aren't actually looking for the vulnerability. They're not trying to compromise the system. Some do. There are some vulnerabilities that operate that way. But the vast majority of them are inventorying software and comparing that inventory against a list of known vulnerabilities that have been registered by the different software vendors that have been ultimately patched by a particular version or patch that was available. And so the scanning process is really the first step in that um, vulnerability management process and being able to scan those systems on a continual basis becomes really key. Now, depending on your compliance requirements, you'll, you'll scan those different intervals. PCI mandates that organizations scan at least every 90 days, uh, but uh, many organizations implement an ongoing rolling process of doing vulnerability scans where there's a, a scan occurring on part of their infrastructure, a segment of their, of their IT assets on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and they just have that running in a rolling process. So they know that every asset within the organization is scanned and is in, assessed for vulnerabilities on at least every three months, in many cases every month, and that rolling process enables them to have a vulnerability program that's an ongoing self-sufficient program for assessment. Now, the, the one key, uh, next key component is one that many organizations skip over, and that is prioritizing the vulnerabilities. And there's two dimensions that we really recommend many organizations look at when they're trying to prioritize vulnerabilities. First, it's looking at the uh, level of exposure that particular vulnerability has. And uh, one of the things we'll talk about in a bit is some of the, the methods of prioritization and understanding the scoring systems behind it. But all vulnerabilities um, are listed in a, a common vulnerability database called CVSS. And based on their ability to compromise a system, have a score attached to them. And so many applications that you can have or services that do vulnerability scanning for your organization will prioritize vulnerabilities on four different levels, whether they're critical, high, medium, or low. Pretty straightforward, but it's important to know what those criticalities are and be able to prioritize the ones that are most critical, specifically critical and high, especially if you're looking at the um, cyber essential certification. And the, the second dimension of prioritization is looking at what it takes to fix that vulnerability. Is Can I address a large number? number of vulnerabilities with a single patch? Uh, can I be able to see what it, the cost is to address that particular vulnerability and being able to prioritize that effort so that you focus your um, remediation and patching efforts around the most critical, most easily exposed vulnerabilities? Of course, the next component is the process of patching. What are we doing to actually upgrade the software and um, change the security policies in some cases so that, that vulnerability is no longer able to be exploited? And one of the other critical components that many organizations forget because they, they get into this process of patching and scanning and patching and scanning is that in some cases, you may not be able to patch a system. It may be a legacy technology that uh, is, you know, you've got an application that's running on an old version of Windows is the most common example of this. And that version, that application doesn't support newer versions of Windows, it has to run on that legacy system. And so now, how can you secure that system knowing that you can't patch it? And this is where different applications can come into play to create compensating controls. Maybe we isolate that system, put it on a specialized network that's highly inaccessible to anything but those authorized to access that system. Maybe we put other software in play to help secure that system. One that's very popular for securing 
very legacy systems are technologies like semantic server security, which actually hardens the whole system and prevents any of the um, methodologies and behaviors that can exploit a vulnerability from being executed. And it's a way to look at those last few systems that cannot be patched for, you know, implementing compensating controls, but taking a thoughtful approach to the uh, systems that cannot be patched, identifying what the issue is and creating that compensating control is a key component of a successful vulnerability management program. Last but definitely not least, because it is so fundamental to your overall security program. It's something that many organizations or many uh, stakeholders in the organization from the executive team down through the technical teams want to know is how well is it working? Are we making our organization fundamentally more secure through the process of this program and so how are you understanding your success measuring the reduction in vulnerabilities measuring the success of your patching and uh, control programs that implement com compensating controls are all really key to a successful uh, vulnerability management program so as we go forward you know what is uh, so what what can we do to prioritize as I said, many of the assessment tools will come back and show you thousands and thousands of vulnerabilities across lots of different applications. And so one of the things we need to do is figure out how do we, how do we rank this? How do we prioritize these different um, scans and be able to identify what are the, the, the items that should be addressed and, and prior, uh, sorted out first? Of course, any high and critical vulnerability should be addressed immediately. Those are the type of vulnerabilities that can be easily exploited, can be leveraged to gain access to other systems, and can lead to a series of vulnerabilities or vulnerability chain, if you will, that leads to an exposure in your organization. So the first is understanding that scoring. What is critical? What's high? Being able to identify those and bring those to the forefront of your program. And then developing a plan. Where are the gaps? And, you know, for systems that have higher critical vulnerabilities, which ones are most critical for running your business? And what are the relative risks to your business associated with those? So that you can be able to address those vulnerabilities first. Because if you're looking at a uh, vulnerability report, it may have tens of thousands of vulnerabilities that you go through an effort to basically close as many of them as possible. But unfortunately, you didn't prioritize those effectively. And the high and critical vulnerabilities still remain in the organization. Uh, the last one, as I mentioned briefly, um, was how do you go through and really maximize your effort? Because the scanning process simply identifies where those gaps exist in your organization. What it doesn't do is identify where you can be able to close a large number of vulnerabilities with a single patch. And so looking at different applications, prioritizing what type of patching you're doing, whether it's on Windows systems, on a particular application. Adobe is always a, an issue for many organizations in patching those systems and creating a process where you can continually patch systems as new releases are available and ensure that those patches can be pushed out into your IT infrastructure without disrupting the services that that infrastructure is fundamentally designed to provide. And so being able to identify where you can be able to get the most bang for your buck, if you will, or as I said on the slide, you know, killing many birds with a single stone, identify where those, the patching can be most effective so you can really make concerted efforts of moving forward. And then once you've got your house in order, so to speak, and you've kind of got a program in place, then you can go through and begin a process of continual patching, uh, not only of your Windows system, Windows software, which is always a big focus for many organizations, but all of the other application software, locking down those vulnerabilities, changing policies to restrict access in some cases to address those type of vulnerabilities, or of course, implementing compensating controls where vulnerabilities can't be addressed through patching or changes in policy. So there's lots of ways that organizations can approach their vulnerability management program. Now, there are a wide range of tools available. Some are open source that are available free of charge from the internet that will go out and scan systems. Other tools are commercially available, really designed to deliver those kind of capabilities via the web and, and other resources. And so the first thing to look at is what is the, the resources you have to addressing your vulnerability um, program 
and for deploying that within your organization. So the first thing I, I suggest many organizations do is look at the size and scope of their IT assets. Looking at, of course, all the, the server and, and desktop operating systems they have, the different network infrastructure components, what applications they're running on these systems, and really at the very first step, get an assessment of what is the landscape of their IT infrastructure. And that discovery process then enables them to get their hands around where they should be focusing their effort, discovering which applications they have, which ones are currently running but are no longer necessary, and maybe decommissioning those, reducing the footprint of that IT infrastructure becomes a big first step. And so using some of these tools, you can be able to really understand what's out there and what's available. And then being able to go through and figure out what um, is the next step once you've identified all of those assets. So you do a discovery process, and then you start the scanning um, of all of those IT assets. And a lot of those, as I said, will come from publicly available databases that will list all of the vulnerabilities that are susceptible to a particular asset within the organization and uh, looking for vulnerability scanning solutions that can cover all of the assets that exist within the organization. So not just you know, assets that are Windows-based, uh, different applications, assets that you have in the, in the cloud, uh, networks, infrastructure, security programs, et cetera. And so you know, there's a wide range of tool sets that are available that enable you to scan those various systems. So the first thing to do is to figure out what tool sets you want to use for that, or look at the kind of services offered by different vendors like Comtac that can go through and provide that vulnerability assessment, vulnerability scanning services for you. Now, the, the scanning services is the first step in looking at the kind of tools that can help you tackle this problem. But the second part is how do you go through the patching process? Because ultimately, using the inherent software itself to do the patches or to roll those patches out manually becomes a, a weighty task for many organizations. As in one of the biggest challenges that we see is the security team is going out there doing vulnerability scanning and then hands off a massive report to the IT operations team. Unfortunately, the IT ops team is busy managing the IT infrastructure, and all they have is a pile of work that's been given to them by the security team, maybe prioritized, maybe not. And then how can they go through and begin the process of patching those systems? Because from an IT ops perspective, it's not simply downloading a patch, pressing a button, and it's fixed. They may have hundreds or thousands of systems that need to be patched. Those patches may need to be tested. They may impact the performance of applications. And so there's a lot of follow-on challenges that the IT ops team has in addressing the patches or addressing the vulnerabilities by patching those systems. And so there are a number of tool sets out there from Microsoft's own SCCM solution to products from SolarWinds, BigFix, Flexera, or many others that can help organizations go through the process of patching. Now, one of the tool sets that we're very fond of at um, Comtact is able to look at the patches and identify which patches are going to deliver the most bang for the buck, which patches are going to have the least impact to application health and uh, security, and be able to prioritize those first because they can go into the organization relatively benignly and be able to protect those systems. And so when looking at solutions, you want to really Really make sure that either a vendor or a piece of technology you're going to run internally addresses the full scope of your IT infrastructure. So it's not just scanning and patching one particular set of applications, but it also understands the priority of not only the vulnerabilities that exist, but also the process of patching and can be able to prioritize the most critical patches early in the, pro in the cycle. And then, of course, be able to deliver this on an ongoing basis across the organization so that you can have a continual process of scanning and patching various systems. And as part of that process, you're looking at the whole of the estate, looking at uh, all the applications, the various operating systems, and the services that you're delivering, not just locally deployed within your infrastructure, but also up within the cloud as well. And so, as you're going through and assessing different solutions, those are some of the key tricks 
if you will, that can really help ensure that the solutions you're using really can deliver on the outcomes you're looking to achieve. Now, one of the, the simplest ways that organizations can address this whole life cycle of scanning, patching, prioritizing, and uh, delivering uh, improved security for the organization is actually looking at fully managed services where the vulnerability assessment and the patching are intertwined into a continual process where you have these occurring on a weekly, bi-weekly basis with the patching and you're able to easily assess that you know, vulnerabilities may be discovered but they're uh, uh, being patched and all of that's outsourced to a vendor that is able to accomplish that for you. It really enables your security teams to focus on the other aspects of your security program and leave, if you will, uh, to use an American term, the blocking and tackling off to the side uh, and outsource that to a vendor that can deliver these for them on an ongoing basis. And of course, one of the, the key things we always recommend when assessing vendors that are gonna deliver a fully managed service is not only the quality of the technology they're using, but most importantly, what kind of reports and analytics are provided to the technical and the executive team so that they can understand how the security is moving forward. It's unfortunately not one of those processes that you can kind of fire and forget. Uh, it's one of those that need to be regularly reviewed and, and addressed. And from there, you'll be able to use that information to not only communicate the evolving state of your security, but also able to go through and demonstrate the um, success of your program and prioritize the other work that your organization may be doing, other projects and programs that you might be putting into place. Lots of different solutions out there, lots of different vendors that can offer services around that, but finding the right vendor, the right combination of technology is really key to having a successful vulnerability management program. Now, Contact offers a number of services around this. Not only can we of course, provide to you the technology that can be used in these cases. But we have a number of vulnerability management services that can help you either as part of a one-off effort. Um, maybe you're trying to get compliance with Cyber Essentials or ISO 27001 and want a vendor to come in, do a top-down assessment, look at the whole state of security, um, identifying where infrastructure and design flaws might exist within your security and then taking that down to the next level, performing a set of vulnerability assessments, providing the recommendations, and working with your teams to do patching, or a complete managed vulnerability service where we'll take not only the process of scanning your organization, but also managing the patching process across the whole of your estate and be able to deliver that for your organization as a completely outsourced solution. So there's a number of different services we can offer. As Chris mentioned, we have our vulnerability engineers looking continuously at different organizations, either providing one-time assessments of their organization as part of a compliance process or kind of a, an opportunity for them to see where they're at and get their organization right again, if you will, to an ongoing vulnerability management service that can basically outsource all of this blocking and tackling, if you will, to a vendor and hold, you know, let them go through the process of continually scanning different solution uh, systems and implementing the patching and uh, remediation processes across your organization. And of course, as we go through that, where we find systems that can't be patched effectively, we'll sit down with your organization and figure out what the right compensating controls can be in place uh, to be able to secure those systems and ensure that these vulnerabilities don't lead to an exposure and a breach in your security. We include this as part of an ongoing set of security services that we have at, some, at uh, Contact that looks at all the different aspects of security, whether it's incident management response, security monitoring, malware protection, um, IT management services like patching and uh, assurance and availability for systems, as well as some of the higher level services and helping you develop the right policies and procedures for your security program. So if you're looking to have a partner come in and act as your trusted advisor for security, that's really at the sweet spot of what we offer at Comtact. 
be able to go in and, and help organizations take a top-down look at their security, implement the right kinds of programs and, and processes in place, and then where necessary, outsource some of that security to us, whether it's their vulnerability management program, their security operations services, or their implementation of security programs within their organization. So just a couple of key takeaways. Most importantly, I'd say, have a plan. Figure out exactly where you're at today, what are the priorities within your organization, and begin a process of vulnerability assessment management across the life cycle of your IT assets. And this means that you're gonna be able to have a program that will first and foremost include IT security and IT operations because you really can't patch those systems without working hand in hand with your partners on the other side of the fence, so to speak, on the IT operations side and getting both organizations or both components of, a, of an IT organization working well together means that you can have a continual process with the least amount of friction to be able to deliver an improved state of security. Of course, the threat landscape is continually changing. Your program should and, and plan should include a way of having continual process, progress and being able to scan on a continuous basis as the threat landscape changes, as your IT infrastructure changes to be able to keep up with those changes and be able to identify where those vulnerabilities exist and how to close them. And then last but not least, how are you measuring that success? And communicating that up to the executive team because a successful vulnerability management program means you have a well-managed set of IT assets. And that's a great thing for your organization. Let's make sure those successes are also heralded up across the executive team so they see how well the IT team is doing its job protecting this organization and making their organization inherently more secure. So with that being said, what I wanted to do now is uh, take a, a bit of time so that we can answer some questions from uh, the audience. And let me ask Chris to come back in and let's do a little Q&A. Chris? Great, thank you very much, Joe. Um, uh, great talk there. So um, we'll just see what questions we've got that have come in. There's just a number here. So uh, first one, when should you use a penetration test as opposed to a vulnerability scan? Phenomenal question, Chris. Penetration tests are really excellent tools for understanding where your organization may have a flaw and where an attacker could gain access to your organization. But the analogy I like to use when comparing vulnerability programs to penetration testing is uh, securing a building or a house, a physical structure, because we all can easily relate to that. A penetration test is like hiring a burglar or a thief to try to get into your house. And to be successful, all they need is a series of open doors or windows that lead them to whatever the assets are they're trying to steal from the organization. And so they only need to get it right one time. A vulnerability management program is actually one that looks at all the windows, all the doors, all the different security that you have in place and make sure it's all working effectively. And so for many organizations, who come to contact and say, you know, I really want to understand where I'm at with security and like a penetration test. My recommendation is actually to use that as a tool to measure how successful the rest of your security is once you've put it in place. Let's start first with a cybersecurity assessment where we can go through and understand your security architecture is everything put in place in the right place, you know, the right security, the right controls and to protect your assets, and then a vulnerability scan so you can under, really understand the state of vulnerabilities that exist in your organization and take them through a patching process. After you've had an opportunity to identify where there may, may be some architectural flaws, where vulnerabilities are and get those patched, a penetration test is a great second step as to, to measure the success of your overall security program. So great question, it's, it's a very useful tool, but I typically recommend that organizations start with vulnerability scans first and then move on to penetration tests as a way of measuring that, that success or unfortunately in some cases failure of those programs. Great, Chris. thank you. Thank you, uh, so the next question was, um, you know, how frequently should you scan for vulnerabilities? I mean, I guess there's a lot of answers to that, but. Um... Well, you know, putting my 
you know, ISO hat on, my risk management hat on, I would say that that really depends on the value and the risk to a particular asset. But as a standard course, organizations should be scanning every system and every asset at least every 90 days. The most successful programs, as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, really have an ongoing process of scanning because they really can't scan the whole of their IT assets in, in one go, one, one weekend, if you will. And so they'll have a continual scanning process where they're going across segments of their IT infrastructure on a periodic basis, scanning those, feeding that data into an ongoing patching process. And of course, patching needs to operate with an IT operation schedule. So you're, you have vulnerability scanning that's occurring weekly, scanning a segment of the infrastructure that feeds into a patching solution that then is patching those systems on a periodic basis based on the technology. If it's Microsoft, for example, we you know, patch on a monthly basis in many cases. Uh, if it's other applications, you may be able to roll out those patches more frequently. And so you really need to look at the, the risk appetite you have for various assets, look at the importance to your infrastructure, but I definitely recommend that organizations are scanning every asset at least every 90 days, optimally every 30 days, and patching those systems as frequently as their IT operations really can allow. And if you find that because these systems are running maybe 24-7, 365, or patches may not be available as quickly as you'd like, then putting in a process of creating compensating controls so that, again, those vulnerabilities can't be exploited um, when an attacker comes knocking. Great, thank you. Um, so I've got one more question here. Um, will vulnerability scans and patching identify all vulnerabilities? I suppose identify Good question. Yeah, it's, the challenge is that, this, as I mentioned at the very beginning, a lot of these tools are looking for known applications with known vulnerabilities. And so in some cases, they're not going to. Um, they're going to identify what we'll, what we'll consider part of due care for an IT management system, which would include ensuring that all of the vulnerabilities are well known. But many vulnerabilities you hear about are called zero-day exploits. A zero-day exploit is one that is not well known in the wild. It's an exploit that's been discovered. It may not have been published or sent back to the original vendor for patching or for remediation, you know, letting Microsoft know that there's a, there's a hole in a particular piece of software as an example. And so zero-day exploits have become a bigger challenge for organizations that are heavily targeted. And so vulnerability management programs are not a panacea. They're not going to see every single vulnerability. There will be new ones discovered, and there will be vulnerabilities that are not inherently based on a flaw in the application. They may be vulnerabilities that are created because the application's improperly deployed. The policies around it are not, Im not properly implemented within the organization. And so the combination of the managing vulnerabilities patching really addresses a good portion of the kind of issues that an organization faces. From there, you have additional security controls that you put in place. Everything from training your staff so that they are not susceptible to phishing attacks and uh, to human-based attacks on the organization, if you will, to implementing various compensating controls, to going through and implementing security technology that's actually looking and assumes an attacker may be in your network so that it can identify that attack and prevent that breach even though the attacker may be using a zero-day exploit or uh, addressing a vulnerability that scanning software isn't designed to address, like, unfortunately, people. And so it isn't a panacea, but for many organizations, it is the one cornerstone of their security program that lets them reduce the amount of noise they have and put their efforts around new security projects and initiatives around addressing those challenges that aren't being addressed through patching and vulnerability assessment software. Good. Uh, great, thank you. Um, I've got another question that's come in. It just says, you know, what about non-Microsoft patching? It's a great question. Uh, lots of the tools that are available from Microsoft focus on only Microsoft software. But 
organizations have lots of different vendors in play. And so what I typically recommend is two things. First, making sure that you have a good discovery process so that you can I, uh, do an asset inventory that includes everything in your organization. Unfortunately, and this isn't meant to be a ding on Microsoft, most of the tools they provide focus heavily on their tool sets, their technology, their applications. And so if you're using Microsoft-based solutions, it's going to focus 99.9% .9 of its effort on Microsoft's own technology, almost assuming that every organization out there only runs big blue within their, org within their IT infrastructure. It's clearly not the case for many, many um, companies. And so being able to go through and have third-party security assessment tools um, that are designed to look across the whole of what might be your IT infrastructure are really key. And so while there are very low-cost tools from Microsoft, I definitely recommend products like Nessus, Tenable, Qualys, or many others that look across the whole estate. And as well, you not only need the right assessment technology, uh, which comes from those third-party vendors, non-Microsoft, if you will, but also the right patching solutions. So lots of companies use Microsoft SCCM to do their patching. Great set of tools. Works great for Microsoft products, but not as well for non-Microsoft. So including patching solutions from IBM with their Big Fix technology or Flexera or um, others can give you the ability to cover 100% of your real estate. And that's key because, as I pointed out in the uh, very first slide, one of the biggest pitfalls many organizations have is they're doing ineffective discovery. They're only focused on the part of the IT infrastructure that's easy to get to or it's really critical for their business, and they're not looking at the whole of the estate, which means that, unfortunately, going back to our um, securing a house analogy, you've locked all the doors, but in the window that leads right into your, uh, you know, the room with all of the jewels in your organization is left wide open. So having a third party tool that looks across Microsoft and non-Microsoft tool set can be really key for your organization. Okay, that seems to be the, the last question that we've had. So, um, I think we'll wrap things up. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for your time. Thank you very much, Joe. Very informative, um, as always. Uh, so we'll just to reiterate, we'll send around the recording. Um, if uh, anybody wishes to discuss things on a one-to-one -one basis, we will, of course, um, be more than happy to talk. Um, so uh, thank you very much, and have a good afternoon. Thank you, Chris.